Hey everyone, welcome back to the place we're testing every single mask that we can get our hands on. Today we're looking at the Little Lives PPE. I'll make my head smaller. <laughs> um, uh, mask, it seems advertised all over the place. I wanted to find out what all the rage was, so we bought some. Let's open it up and get it in the clamper. So made in the USA. I don't know these guys, which is weird. Because I know most of the American manufacturers, they, they actually, they're probably having someone else manufacture for them. Um, and it comes packaged, that's nice. So it's packaged there and then packaged here. And there's probably a, a good reason for that from a factory perspective. Made in the USA, made in the USA. Okay, let's put it in the clamper and see how she blows. It's actually, uh, the machine actually it sucks, it doesn't blow. It's technically speaking here. Good. And let's let her rip. This is a PFE machine, particulate filtration efficiency machine. We are doing the N95 test here. Why, Lloyd, are you doing the N95 test for something that's not an N95? Well, they are making some weird claims on here. So if you look on here, it says the LL95, I guess Little Lives, KN95 equivalent for kids. Okay, so they're kind of claiming that it has the KN95 standard. So it says it's manufactured in the US from imported raw materials in a ISO 9001 certified facility. It's undergone rigorous third party testing via Nelson Labs. So I don't like this. I don't like the name LL95. Why don't I like that? Because it's kind of like making you think that it's an N95, and N95 requires going through all of this rigorous testing, not just passing a machine one time with this test, uh, but so much more, I mean, so much more. And you can see here, like they're even comparing it. LL, can you see that on there? I don't know if you're reading that. LL95, made in the USA, N95. Uh, performance, 99.5%. So they're claiming 99%, which is exactly what this machine is made to test. Uh, N95 is only 95, so they're kind of making a claim that it's better than N95, which is preposterous. And they're saying they're better than KN95 as well. So I don't like that, the, I don't know, because I just feel like the uninformed consumer is gonna see LL95 and assume that it's like an N95. And the way that they're marketing is, is telling you, they're trying to make you think that it's like better than an N95. But the thing about an N95 is not just the fact that it passes this test. It's also all of the rigorous like, you know, background checks and like making sure, like, and process for throwing away bad material and process for keeping good material together and how much auditing they do. That's what makes an N95 so good. Um, and this has none of that because it's some <laughs> brand that just made it up. <laughs> so, all right, let's try the ear loops. Wow. Wow. That's horrible. That's one of the worst ear loops that I, I've tested hundreds of KN95s. I'm just try putting this on. The smell is not bad. Smells pretty good. And I'm just wondering if like as a kid, cause my kids will do this, you know? Yeah, see, it's gonna break right on their face. So I, I, can't, I can't recommend it based on that. I also felt that, yeah, look at that. That was just breaking. I could feel it as I was putting it on. Granted, my face is larger than most kids, but I mean, it shouldn't like tear like that. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a bad process. So here's a good example. An N95, would probably never tear this way because of the rigorous processes they have in their manufacturing process, which clearly does not exist here. Does any of that matter if it doesn't protect you? Now, we already talked about the airflow resistance was what, 191. Very high, 191 pascals. Within standard of a KN95, they say it's a KN95 equivalent. They're not making a claim that it is a KN95, um, but, uh, but you know, in the back of the page, they were saying it had to be under a certain breathability. It's there, but like 195 is really high for a kid's mask. I want it to be under 100, personally, for a kid's mask. 
Jeez. They also, I don't know, I just don't, I just don't love this stuff that they're doing here. So they're also saying, doctor's choice, number one, doctor's choice. That's just a piece of clip art that someone threw on there. there where's the doctor? Show me. If the doctor, if the doctor's there, like, hey, doctor, come out wherever you are. Are you hiding? All right, let's look at the PFE machine. I won't beat them up anymore. They are meeting uh, the minimum standards for CAN95 or N95, uh, which is 95%, and they're hitting uh, 97.904. But I will throw them under the bus one more time because why not? We're here. Uh, look at this. I don't know if you can see this. They're claiming 99.5% on the bag. That's a, first of all, it's just a ridiculously bold claim. There's no reason to claim that every, that's, that would be really hard to consistently get every single mask to, especially when their quality control process clearly is not in line where it needs to be. But they're also not meeting it here, so. Now, is this mask gonna protect your child? Like, yeah, probably it is. But this like number one doctor recommended and like all these magazines like promoting them, you know. I just think that we could do better, as, especially if this is actually being made in the U.S., we could do better in, that, in this country, I think. Um, that's just my personal thoughts on it. It does protect you, though. Now, whether or not it'll stay in their face is another story altogether. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, and I will catch you on the next test, which will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. See you there. See you there.